On March 14, 1939, Adolf Hitler broke the pledge he made at Munich. He took over all the rest of Czechoslovakia. There would be no more peace in our time. September 1939, I was posted to Morocco through French Foreign Legion, but I was redirected to Marrakesh. That's where I did my first flight in French Colonial Air Force aircraft in September 1939. I found myself at the age of barely 20. I was a chief corporal in the French Air Force. There we were confronted with the reality that France was not defending herself. People around me didn't want to fight, they didn't want to be in the war. And when I said, but the Germans will occupy Paris, so what? Who cares, they'll go home so, soon enough. But nearly middle of June, when things were definitely very bad, and we were sent to Bordeaux, Merignac. But there's nothing we can do, and even the captain in charge said, look, chaps, there's nothing I can do. Everybody on his own, get out whichever way you can, make it for England. England is standing and fighting. Uh, they heard on the radio a call from sort of Winston Churchill, uh, an announcement on the radio saying that could all the Czech pilots please come and join the RAF and, and help England out with the war effort. So of course they were only thrilled to do that. Time was running out. The Nazis had begun their shattering blitz on Britain. Hello America. This is Edward Murrow speaking from London. There were more German planes over the coast of Britain today than at any time since the war began. Anti-aircraft guns were in action along the southeast coast today. And then they um, went to Duxford, and that was where 312 Squadron was formed in August 1940. Battle of Britain. Leader has been in biggest danger because he led it, he started it. And Father back, they didn't get such a density of a fire. 30 gunners pointing guns at you. Somebody ought to get you. But it was once at the back who usually got it, you know, by fighters. Because they wouldn't go and pick the front one, they picked the back one. It wasn't very good. The pilot would say, ah, that would be easy picking. We, we all went to a dance on the Saturday night and uh, we saw these airmen but never taken any notice of them, you know, until I, one came up, clicked his heels and asked me to dance. And I was frightened, I thought, oh. and he said, I am Czechoslovakian. And I thought, where well, is Czechoslovakia? I didn't even know, never heard of Czechoslovakia. And um, that's how we met. And suddenly, I see a vision. In a distance, I see a gentleman in khaki uniform, I think he was a colonel, with somebody in blue uniform. He stood out so tremendously. And he was so handsome. They were all lovely. Two or three I didn't like, but most of them were lovely. And I looked at him and I said, ah, if I only can dance with him if he only comes and asks me. And I knew, I mean, I was so far away from him. Thousands of people in front of me. Would you believe it? That man looked up and marches on through the throng of the people and sort of stops in front of me and said, may I have this dance? I couldn't believe it. Well, when he was courting Mummy, you know, who he was sort of very much in love with, and I think he wanted to impress her. So he just decided on the spare of a moment to fly his Spitfire over her apartment block. Yeah, so anyway, he decided that he was going to do all these aerobatics outside her window. And of course, Mummy heard the engine going, and so she knew, oh God, it must be Tommy. So she rushed to the window, opened the window, looked out, and there he was doing all these fabulous aerobatics, you know, outside her window, uh, which were incredible. I mean, one moment she was actually scared, you know, because they were so alarming, but she was sort of thrilled and excited as well. And then just before he was about to leave, he just sort of said, 
you know, bye-bye with his wings and flew off, and, and she was absolutely smitten. The one thing that he did speak about, um, his great love of the actual Spitfire plane. He held, you know, the Spitfire in such high esteem because he adored flying Spitfires. And he, to him, uh, he feels that they were the best planes ever invented. And he used to talk about their marvelous sort of aerodynamic nature, their beauty, and that they were so sort of sensitive to handle. Um, such an easy plane to fly. I feel it's so wonderful that um, that he and the plane and everybody else is, is being remembered. And I, I feel that this has kind of drawn his spirit nearer to us all. So many Spitfires were destroyed during the war or left to sort of, I don't know, go derelict or whatever. And it's just so amazing that this Spitfire is still around and, and it's going to be so lovingly cared for, you know, so we're thrilled.